Prakash Divan is joining us now to tell us how to approach the markets and of course all the stocks that are in the news. Prakash, hi, good morning. First up, have to ask you about TCS, right? The management commentary was decent, uh, record deal wins, margins are looking good. At this price, is the risk reward favorable for investors? Good morning, Sonia. So I think what they're trying to uh, convey from most of the commentary is uh, that while things were good in quarter four, they were not as good as they would have liked it, which means there's always room for improvement, which is uh, which is meaningful. And uh, to Prashant's question on how uh, you know good would uh, FI25 be or calendar 24 be, uh, the, while they were KG, they, that very clearly indicates that uh, it's part of you know an industry trend where they will probably be the forerunners for any improvement that happens, whether it comes from the AI side, whether it happens from a BFS side turnaround, the quick adaptation to things. So. I think the commentary was far more indicative of uh, things to come, favorable things to come than the numbers alone. And from that perspective, yes, it could have some legs. Uh, we, we've seen it rally much beyond the larger, other three, four larger players in India. But I think it's it's now looking for a setup where the global industry trend, uh, with the, the, the goodness of the global industry trend uh, on its way up could probably be captured by TCS very, very well. So I would believe at least a 15, 20% upside uh, I've seen some targets come through in the same vicinity, and that seems very logical. So you know, it it, it becomes a great buy on dips if something goes wrong from a from a overall market softness perspective. You probably know that this is a stock, uh, a large well weather stock that could give you 15, 20 percent on the next 12 months. Okay, all right. Hi, Prakash. Uh, good morning, and good to see you. When you know you have that news with regard. Uh, to Russian supplies, they won't be traded on uh, yes. the LME as well as on CME. And normally in the near term, that gives a bit of a pop. But, you know, we know what happens in the longer term because if I look at it from the highs of the day, aluminium prices have just come up $60, $70 from today's high. Uh, your view on the stocks, they're likely to open up. That's Nalco, Vedanta as well as Hindalco. But what from there? Good morning, Nigel. So, you know, from a slightly longer term structural perspective, I, I still like Indalco. We spoke about this uh, post the disappointment in the last earnings call where they spoke about a huge capex in the U.S. business. But that is something which will consolidate their position globally. And if you if you are willing to wait for some of these uncertainties, some of these uncertainty to play out um, by the time, you know, the next three, four quarters uh, roll out, it's going to be very, very strong. So that's that's uh, clearly a good medium to long term bet. But in the short term, if you look at Vedanta, I mean, you know, barring uh, certain issues that we've had disappointments with uh, some of the management decisions uh, on capital allocation, it sits in a very sweet spot, Nigel. And you know, uh, you know, it's it's firing on all cylinders, whether it's oil, whether it's uh, copper, whether it's aluminium, whether it's zinc, silver. I mean, you name it, and they have it in their bag. So. All of that is probably what could capture the salient in the short term. And this short term bump that you uh, bump up that you spoke about will probably this pop is actually going to help Vedanta more than any of the other players because of its global uh, presence in that sense. And, and investors also know that it has uh, things which work and that, you know, that planned demerger of sorts will only kind of create some sort of a, a opportunistic play in the stock. So I think from where it is, it's moved very smartly, right? From from the 240, 250 zones to all the way here. So it could probably be the be the joker in the pack at this point in time. But I would I would look at Indalco from a slightly more longer term perspective. Uh, Prakash, I wanted your thoughts on Indian hotels because uh, there is a brokerage report from UBS where they've actually raised their target price to 715 there and they expect more earnings upgrades on Indian hotels and we've all seen how this whole travel tourism space is picking up in a big way. Uh, would you still recommend buying it at this price? Oh, absolutely. I mean, this is a space where I, I think there's significant amount of capital allocation uh, that's already underway and it's just likely to go manifold. The reason is very simple. It creates employment uh, like no other sector does. Uh, the second is that uh, the right to win for some of these brands, uh, which which straddle right from luxury to affordable to you know, so you have the you know the the Taj extreme uh, uh, high end luxury segments to the ginger, which India hotels uh, uh, straddle so very effectively. And what's happened is after some of their recent capital raising issues, uh, you know the uh, events. It's, it's got a balance sheet that can not just expand uh, very fast, 
but it can expand very profitably. So that that was missing, you know, a few years back. And as a as a matter of change, what's happened is the commentary tech actually talks about getting into the right pockets, right segments, but very aggressively. ITC has been talking about doing it. Uh, EIH has been doing it quietly. You have some of the smaller players like Lemon Tree and all. But Taj has a very different, Indian Hotels has a very different model where, you know, the ROAs are far more effective as compared to some of the other names. So I, I believe uh, there is there is a case for a merit for uh, re-rating there. Now, how soon that happens will depend, will be correlated to the expenditure that the government uh, starts making in some of these new areas. But absolutely very positive on this space. And uh, there's no reason why you should be out of it. We spoke about Thomas Cook and some of the other names also in that uh, same vein. But Indian Hotels does become the proxy to any any kind of a capital uh, enrichment of sorts in this space.